You're awful quiet right now. So, aren't you supposed to be at the election? No, you gotta go do that. EJ, can you tag in? Let's do it. Co-piloting, I like it. <laughs> Abominable. Abominable. And somewhat despite. <laughs> <laughs> this is abominable. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, everybody. Hey, welcome to Talk Heathen. This is a very special episode. You know me. I'm Eric Murphy. And this is EJ Hello. Sorrell. Hello, I'm not Jamie, but I am abominable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. This is this is really awesome. I absolutely love it. This is let's see. Today is May sixth, right? Uh, 2018, and it is episode two, se season two, episode 18. <laughs> Struggling there. I am. I am. Well, it's a real. It's been a really busy, exciting week, and stuff is going on right now. But I guess before I gush. How have you been? It's been a while. What's what's what have things been like since your first <laughs> time on Talk Heathen? Well, it's the end of the semester. Had my last day of classes on Friday. Final nice. start on Wednesday. So I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Very convincing. Yeah, I have four finals and two final projects all due within like a week of each other. So it's gonna be a fun. It's gonna be a fun couple of days. So this is like my last day to not scramble and study and die. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm glad, you get, I'm glad you get to spend it with us. I'm really, really excited. Um, so what did you think of uh, the feedback? You've got a lot of feedback uh, on the episode that you were on. I think that's one of our most popular episodes. <laughs> it's obviously my natural charisma rolled a nat 20. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I have really enjoyed the feedback. Uh, it's been really interesting to see how people responded to me. There's been some, let's say, real negative stuff, uh, but there's been some really positive stuff too. And it's it's been interesting because a lot of the positive stuff has been like one on one, like people reaching out to me and telling me that they really liked me, which I really love. Please keep doing that. It makes me really happy and feeds my ego, <laughs> which it totally needs to be fed. Uh, but the, the, the negative stuff tends to be the YouTube comments, which are always a dumpster fire pretty much on any YouTube video. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, you know, the, there was a whole lot of talk. And, you know, the interesting thing is, is a lot of those comments, it seemed like people were focusing on what they thought you represented rather yeah. than you. I didn't see a lot of stuff directed at you. As yeah, a lot as... of the response was like, at the image of me that they have of like their assumption of who I am based on what I look like and, mm -hmm. and um, you know some of the things that I that I said I see somebody asking why I'm not wearing a hat today I mean I actually I do have a hat with me I just I was feeling I was just feeling oh there's the <laughs> camera I do have a hat with me I was just feeling let let my hair float I free. like it I like <laughs> it um, so let's see over here Today is election day at the ACA. So while we are doing the show, out in the back, everybody is uh, voting for president, vice president, and the rest of the board. And so that's really big for us, especially for me, because I'm the social media coordinator for the organization. So I get to find out who my bosses are. But just before we started, I got news. I found out that Jamie Boone got elected president of the atheist <laughs> community of Austin for the next year. So that's going to be really, really fun, really exciting. We'll see if uh, we can fit me and his ego. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's awesome. He's going to yeah, be Yeah, we'll see. His, I'm excited. He won't be able to wear his hat anymore. His head will be so inflated. Oh, it can fit in that <laughs> glittery thing that he sticks on his head. That's all right. Um, but other than that, I think that's about it. I'd, I'd be totally good with getting to calls. What do you think? I'm into it. I'm into all it. All right. Well, it's kind of a blast from the past because... Carl called in again, and uh, we put him through. Carl, you are live with Eric and EJ. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Good, uh, good. Good to talk to you both. Uh, good to talk to you, too. Uh, so uh, what did you want to talk about? Well, um, I guess I wanted to continue the discussion we were having, <clears throat> and uh, which was about uh, pronouns and transgenderism in general. And uh, I'm hoping this time, you know, um, you can 
extend me the courtesy of 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 continuing this discussion, an intellectual discussion, and also that you know I'm trying to operate somewhat as a devil's advocate, and that um, you know personally, if I was to have somebody in my life who was a transgender person, I would try to do whatever I could to uh, properly genderize them with pronouns and so forth. But um, I just want to talk about the practical problems of um, of pronoun usage. Are you, so, uh, what example are you, do you have? Because did you see the episode where uh, uh, my friend Rusty called in and we had a long discussion about that? I, I did. And um, so, and, and we we can dis, we can we can discuss that as well. Um, no, th I, th that's why but, I had Rusty call in because I'm not going to discuss that one. Yeah, can I can I ask um, why you feel the, that there's the need for a devil's advocate in this conversation? Just because if you are sympathetic to um, trans identity and and our understanding of it, there's plenty of people already who aren't and who are making the arguments against it. So is there really a need for you to play devil's advocate in this issue? Okay, well, um, let, let me try to get into uh, what, what I'd like to discuss, which is a practical problem and and let me use an analogy, which is that... Um, um, Maybe before you, you use the analogy, could you describe the problem that you're trying to, you know, use an analogy oh, to the explain? Is, 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 is it's actually very hard for humans to reprogram their minds to use pronouns that don't make grammatical sense to them. Uh, that, okay. that is the practical problem. Is that it's very difficult, and, and let me... Let me express how difficult it is. Carl. I called in. When I called in, your call screener misgendered you as she. Okay? That's how hard this is. See, the thing is, so, so yes, I 100% I get that adjusting pronouns is a little difficult. And I've, I've done it before. No, I have. I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying it's extremely difficult because... But it's and, doable. And me, That's the let me, thing. Let me... Let me it, it is. It and is because I'm I've done not, it, and I have plenty of friends who've done it. So really what you're saying is you don't want to try hard enough to be able to do it. Or you're just not comfortable not with what it. I said. That's not what I said. I said that maybe, my position is, is that maybe it, it, is, it is hard enough that we should reconsider. So, so, so he, 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 all right. Okay, no. hold on. Just, Your position, no, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Your position, and this may not be how you intend it, but this is exactly what you're saying, is that it is more difficult. It, it's, it's too much of a challenge for you to adjust the way that you refer to someone, that it's more, it matters more to you that it's a challenge for you than making that person comfortable. That is what you're okay. saying in this moment. I'm, and, not, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about everyone. But that's not true. Because People absolutely can and do adjust the way that they use pronouns. And so what you're saying okay. is that because you so find it difficult, I, I everybody finds Carl, it difficult. I Let me Jay talk. You on the, on, I listen to you on the nonprofits, and I know that uh, Russell is, is totally on board, right? But he also misgendered you. And I'm yeah, saying, and that takes hard. adjustment. It takes. Uh, listen, I'm not going to jump onto somebody and say, "How dare you use the wrong pronoun for me?" As long as they're respectful and just like quickly correct it, it's not a big deal. Yeah. You know, I have friends who still accidentally misgender me, and I understand. I'm not going to bite somebody's head off for doing okay. it just because they made a little slip of the tongue. It's like if you accidentally refer to somebody as the by the wrong name, or like if you call your teacher mom by accident. Like things happen. Language is difficult. Brain are complicated, but as long as you are trying, it is something that you can reprogram your brain to do. And in fact, I have done it. My friends have done it. My family has done it. It is not that difficult. Uh, I, okay, I, I'm saying that it is pretty hard. Who cares? For and you. Not... Okay, hold on, Carl. I heard the argument. No, I heard the argument. I don't care about the argument, right? You wanna... I don't care that you're not comfortable. Can you give another argument? Because that one does not fly. You want to talk about what's hard? You want to talk about what's hard? Living in a society that says that you are a particular gender, that you are not, and refers to you that way, and hurts you, and causes you physical harm, emotional harm, psychological harm, and trauma because of who you are. That's what's hard. Okay, I, I, I would like, I would like, 
I, I, I'm very interested in hearing what it means. Um, now, the call screener said that you're not transgender, and I would like uh, some terminology clarification. The call screener was incorrect. I am non-binary and I identify as transgender. Not every single person who is non-binary uses the trans term, but it is okay. something that is a personal choice. So I personally identify as trans and non-binary. Okay. Oh, thank you for clearing up the confusion. But I, I want to know, you know, kind of what it means to you to be transgender and, and what, you know, you know, brass tacks, what is, what is it about being identified as a particular gender? Because there's, there's a continuum, right, of, of people, people's behaviors that we can identify as classically male or classically female. And people always are on some sort of continuum. And I, I want to know what non-binary means uh, to you. So in the way that you personally, so assuming that you identify as a man, in the way that you personally know that you are a man, and that's not something that you can just say, oh, well, I like sports and I like to wear, you know, T-shirts. That makes me a man. Like, that. that's not, you know, that's not all that there is to your gender identity. In the way that you just know that you are a man or just know what your sexuality is, I just know that I am non-binary. And I could talk to you um, a bit more about, like, issues of dysphoria and, and things like that. But, frankly, it's kind of personal, and I don't particularly want to get into that. But it's, it's one of those things that takes a lot of self-exploration. And a lot of people have kind of a long journey of figuring out how they identify, how they feel in regards to gender, how they wish to be presented and interpreted by the world. And it, it's not something that I can really sum up quite easily in, in the time that we have on the show. Um, that's something that is a longer conversation to have. And there are, there are a lot of resources out there of people talking about their, their gender identity experience and the way that they came to identify the way that they do. Um, and I, I could talk a little bit about, about my own personal background and how I, how I got to the identity that I have, um, if, if you like. But that, again, it's, it's a little bit personal. Um, I don't know how much I'm comfortable discussing on, on the show. but. Yeah, I, I don't really know if I answered your question just then, but... <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I'm... Well, let, let me give you an example, a personal example uh, from my life, which is that um, I op I've operated as a stay-at-home dad uh, because I did not want to put my uh, infant children into daycare, and my wife was working. And so I was caring for my children since they were eight weeks till, you know... Um, four years on or so as the primary caregiver whenever my wife was at work. And that is not a classically male trait. My right? dad did the same thing. Okay. And so that, that's, that's kind of, so, so the question for me is, is, is that transgenderism or is it just no, it's, that I am not? So there's a difference between gender roles and gender identity. And they're not one to one. So if you are, if you have a particular gender identity, you don't have to fulfill those gender roles to still be that gender identity. You know, there are men who can wear dresses and be comfortable, who can wear makeup, and they are still men. And there are women who like to play rugby and I don't know any kind of stereotypically feminine or masculine things. You can do those things and still hold gen your gender identity to be whatever it is. Gender identity and gender roles are not connected in the way that people tend to assume that they are. So just because somebody is a man and enjoys wearing dresses because they think that they're comfortable and they feel really, you know, they, it makes them feel good about themselves and feel attractive and whatever else, that doesn't make them not a man. But a trans woman who wears a dress is not a man in a dress. It, it's not, it's not a one-to-one. -one. You know, you don't have to fulfill every single gender role of your gender identity. Okay. Um. The thing is, so, so the problem I think that we're having here is that understanding what it's like to be trans is really difficult if you aren't trans. It's, it's one of those things that it, it's an experience that you have to have to know what it's like. And I can't sit here and tell you what it's like to be non-binary in the same way that you couldn't sit there and tell me exactly how it feels to be a man because I'm not a man and I haven't had those feelings. So it's, it's, it's complicated because we're talking about matters of personal experience and personal identity. And those are incredibly, incredibly um, individual experiences and it can be really, really difficult to explain to somebody else what that feels like. 
Okay. So, I mean, if we go back to like what gender classically is or whatever, you know, I, I look at it as it's a collection of traits. And, um, and typically those traits are assigned to the particular sexes, biological sexes, because there's hormones that drive people to have those traits. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what non-binary means. It's still not, it's not as clear cut as you think, even when you're talking about biological sex. Um, and this is something that we've discussed, that I think was discussed a little bit when I was on the show last time, but biological sex is just as constructed as gender. And anybody that has taken a biology class... Constructed? Yeah, uh, anybody that has taken a biology class above, like, ninth grade, you know, any kind of bio major in college can tell you that that sex, biological sex, is not definitively one thing or the other. Yes, there are collections of traits that we typically associate with one thing or the other, but just having, you know, XX or XY is typically how people like to talk about it, of like, if you have XX, you're a girl, and if you have XY, you're a boy. That's not always true. There are people who have XY chromosomes but have feminine uh, quote unquote feminine um, biological sex characteristics because they have androgen insensitivity. And there's all kinds of different ways in okay, which biology is not clear cut one way or the other. Kind of, those are kind of corner cases. Um, but it's not, it's not actually, it's far more common than people realize. Biology, uh, biological sex in almost any species is never as clear cut as people, as people believe because the last time that they took what, what biology I'm, was ninth what grade. I'm saying, what I'm saying is if, if you take an average population of biologically male and an average population of biologically female, you will have these traits like uh, males are aggressive, uh, okay. females but that's are not, typically more nurturing. That, okay, uh, you're just making generalizations that aren't actually biological traits. A lot of those have to do with socialization. There, there, there is a nurture part, but uh, you're denying that there's any sort of nature part of, of this? I'm not denying it. What I'm saying is that it is really, really incredibly difficult to tell exactly what is coming from biology and what is coming from socialization because those factors are so intertwined and it can be really, really difficult. Like, for example, a lot of times people talk about how, quote unquote, men have better spatial visualization, spatial awareness than women do. And a lot of that has to do with the kinds of toys that we're exposed to as children and what we grow up playing with. So I have fantastic spatial awareness and that's not me being like, uh, full of myself, I, I know for a fact that I have really good spatial awareness because I grew up playing with Legos and I played with Rubik's Cubes and I did all of those different things that involve building and, and playing with, with space. And people who don't do that growing up, it actually affects the way that your brain develops. So, so a lot of the things... I, 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 agree. I agree with that. that there's like, you know, throwing balls, uh, you know, playing catch or whatever, um, that, that enhances uh, spatial uh, awareness or whatever. But the point, um, the point that but, I'm trying but, to, the point that I'm trying to get but, at with that is that. But I would say that the science would say that there's still biological traits can between I, the sexes. Can I ask what your level of education in regards to biology is? Uh, I took biology, uh, biology as electives um, in um, a four-year school. Um, okay, so, but it was I mean, like I, it was. Like first year bio, or were you taking like advanced biological sciences, genetic uh, sciences? I'm an, and this I'm isn't. I'm an engineer. I'm an engineer. Okay, and this isn't meant to like discredit you or say that you're you're not educated because I'm not I'm not a bio major either. But I have spoken to people who are biology majors and who do have expertise in the field that do say biological sex is not as clear cut as we think. And almost any kind of research paper that you read about it will say biolog biological sex is not as clear cut as you think. You know, there's a fungus that has literally thousands of different biological sexes. Um, birds have different ways that they uh, deal with biological sex. You know, there are fish we're that talking, change We're talking gender. about people, we're talking about people and on average what, what people are. But, uh, but the on, point is I? that nature is not as clear cut as you think. It is never a case of one category or another yeah. category. It is and I'm always. not saying it is. I, I, I just discussed that everybody is on some continuum, right? Yeah. But so on I, average, there is there, on average there is a um, on average there is there's a mean for these different. But traits. why does that matter? Yeah. What, what 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 are you getting at, Carl? I mean, you, you have to be going somewhere, right? Because if we're just asserting things and eh, I don't know, well, just for some reason, I, I'd like no, to get I, to the I next call. The, I think the point. I think the point. I think the point I was yeah. just trying to make there 
was that uh, EJ was trying to say that it, that sex is not related to, or that, that gender is not related to sex at all. That's and not what that's I not said. True. That isn't what I yeah. said. Carl, um, go back in and listen. Um, there's been time. You can call back again, and we'll get the chance to talk about it. I didn't really have a lot of room to talk because that's not my yeah. area. I didn't feel like it was appropriate. To for me clarify too, a little bit, so I, to, to clarify a little bit, because I think you may have um, misinterpreted what I said slightly. When I was talking about biological sex as being constructed and gender as being constructed, what it means is that we have associations that we place on the different traits that are associated with each of those constructions, and because of those those. Uh, associations that we place, it makes us interpret people in a certain way. And really what gender comes down to is at birth, a doctor looks at your genitalia and decides, does that look more like a penis or does it look more like a vagina? And they pick it and they say, okay, you're a boy or you're a girl. And that's not, that doesn't always line up with how people actually identify. And... EJ, you said the vagina word. Oh no, I said a, oh no. no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point is, yes, for a lot of people, it does line up. A lot of people, their biological sex that a doctor looks at their genitalia and says, okay, you're a boy or a girl. For a lot of people, yes, it does line up with how they identify in their gender. But for a lot of people, it doesn't. There are literally millions of transgender people in the world. And we don't feel, we don't agree with the doctor's assessment of our gender. And we don't want to live in the way that a doctor said that we should live just because they looked at our genitalia at birth and said, you're a boy or a girl. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> okay, and so um, I don't have any problem with that. So um, cool. Then, then we're what in is, agreement? Yeah. Then right. what is your? Yeah, issue? Well, I, do have, I do have a problem with one thing that you've discussed on nonprofits, and I would like to uh, let's to let's this up. let's make it quick because I have a whole lot of other callers, and I don't want this whole episode to be okay. this call. I I do not agree that you should give children puberty blockers. Did one okay. of us say that? I don't care if you agree. I mean, that's between the child, their parents, and their doctor. It's got nothing to do with you. Right. And, and, and I think, well, no, I think it's, it's bad for the child, and I don't think that they can consent. Carl, to, Carl, to doing... Carl, there are a lot what? of parents that make choices for their kids, and we don't have, you know, we, we don't have a place in there. Um, it's between their doctor and It's, it's literally abuse, none of your business abuse. is the point. It is child none abuse. of your business. It does not affect you personally. If you're, okay. If you're, if, you're damaging, if you're damaging children... Okay, so, so Carl, you're saying you view that as child abuse. Okay. I, I hear wrong. you. I, no, listen, you are, you are wrong because you want to know why? Because if that kid has to grow up and go through the wrong puberty... That kid is at so much more risk for trauma, for depression, for anxiety, for suicide attempts. So I would so much rather have a child with a higher risk of osteoporosis what than a, a dead child. Risk? What about the other risk? What about the fact that they may not be able to procreate because of, of, of the damages? Not everybody wants to procreate. By these artificial drugs. That's... But, how can a child decide that? But it's not a child deciding that is the thing. Puberty blockers don't significantly decrease fertility. And we don't have an... The problem is that people so, think so that trans have, people don't matter and there aren't we enough have, studies on how to deal with trans health. That's the problem. Do, do, we have, do we have actual accurate information that puberty blockers do not affect fertility? We don't know for sure because the problem the problem is okay. that some people well, aren't going to be right. so you do too. no harm. Listen, no okay, harm. listen, okay. go do Let's research because there are, there are academic papers do out no there harm. that could tell you the risks better than I can. All I'm right. not a medical expert. We're good, we're good. Carl, so, look yeah. back. We'll take a look at this and we'll table this because I want to get onto the next call. Okay. Okay, I know it's difficult for you. Ooh. Okay. Well, let's see how difficult it Ooh, is. Oh, he to got keep a last you. word in. Wow. No, let's just see how difficult it is for him to get back on the show. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, it was talked about in the comments, and I really do want to discuss this why we are talking about trans issues on an atheist show. And that is because atheism, you know, the atheist term, I reject the assertion that there is a God. Um, if we did that, we'd do one episode, peace out, and walk out. Uh, but we share a world with other people. And along with atheism, a lot of us, and myself in particular, um, and a lot of people that I know and care about, we are secular humanists. Uh, it involves 
being kind and good to others and building the best kind of world that you can. And that means being inclusive. It, it means being considerate. And it's not that hard to be considerate. And I feel like there's a moral obligation when you have a platform to be able to help that. So for people in the comments who are saying, oh, I didn't want the you know sociology experience or whatever, I get it, but you don't, I mean, that's 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 what we did. There's so. that, and also everybody belongs in atheism, and that includes trans atheists, that includes atheists who are people of color, that includes gay atheists and bi atheists, and mm -hmm. people of all different walks of life. They're welcome in the atheist movement too. And here, you exactly. have a home here. So being inclusive welcomes those people too, and talking about these issues tells them they have a place in the atheist movement. And I've had people reach out to me and say, you know, I, I was so excited to see you using they them pronouns on an atheist show because I haven't felt welcome in this movement because so many parts of the atheist movement are virulently transphobic. Just looking at the comments on some of the videos that I'm in are just, you know, there's there's people calling me a dyke, there's people calling me a he she or like asking, is that a boy or a girl? Like just virulently transphobic, virulently homophobic. And and being inclusive and making those people feel welcome is so important. And talking about these issues is so important. We're not just atheists, we're people too. That's right. Thank you so much for being here and doing that. Really appreciate it. So um, I'd actually like to get to a less contentious call. <laughs> Colonel Phil in North Carolina, for hey. those who don't know Colonel Phil, uh, he is the amazing person who's been doing the, all the animations. Colonel Phil did the animation for us earlier, and um, I'm super excited. How's it going, man? Long time no talk. I'm doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> doing well. Doing well. I, I'm happy. I can I'm tell. I'm happy as a hog in a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want to talk about? Well, my wife is completing her deconversion. Really? And, uh, yeah, and we're just a couple old farts sitting here in North Carolina, and we're sitting here saying, who cares what somebody calls themselves as a gender? How are they as a person? You know what I mean? I don't, I, I respect what they want to identify as. What a novel the idea. The content of a person's character? Oh. Yeah, a character. I'm a character. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> other people have some. <laughs> For those who aren't but, lucky yeah, enough I mean, to have seen Colonel Phil, Colonel Phil looks like Santa. <laughs> ho, ho. <laughs> um, Just a big old ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's not just people uh, who are experiencing trans issues. It's also uh, people of different ages. And, um, you know, you will always have a home here too, right, right Phil? Yeah. Damn straight. Good. So, so, I mean, how long has your wife been going through this deconversion for? Uh, well, she started watching the show. What's it been, Booger? Booger, how long have you been watching the show? She's watching it now. Been a few months now since she started watching the show, and I knew that would be the camp of it. Which, which show? And I think she's got a crush on uh, Jamie's daddy, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she might, she, she, not the only one, yeah. Well, she's 68 <laughs> years old. I figure she can have a crush on her if she wants to. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't gonna do neither one of them any good. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so have you been able to be there to answer questions? Was there? Yes, yes. She had one thing hanging on to her, and it was a personal experience. Mm. And I used you guys, the logic you guys use, and I said, "Well, is it possible that what you know is emotionalism?" Because she knew she'd felt emotionalism in church. I said, "Is it possible that your personal experience?" was just that keyed up because of the situation we were in. And she thought about it, and she said, well, yeah, I guess it is. That cleared up about the rest of it, right, Jack? <laughs> Good. Good. That's, and that... we, just see it as, we just see it as a person is uh, respected as they, are, as they act, as they act, treat other people. That's how I show my respect to them and then how they show respect to others. And I don't care what, how they identify themselves. Uh, I identify myself as tall and handsome, <laughs> just because I want to. <laughs> hey, well, you, uh, you you are, so that's all right, brother. 
<laughs> but uh, I just think people ought to just, I don't know, it's kind of like, why can't we all just get along, you know, and not care about the things that really don't matter to you personally at all. Exactly. The world would be so much better if people just mind their business once in a while. Well, <laughs> just let exactly. people be who they are. And we're building that one. So like keep one brick at a time. We're, we're, we're creating it. I know. It's all I can do to keep Booger in order. Why am I going to worry about somebody else? <laughs> That's awesome. I'm really, really happy to hear it. So when's your wife calling in? Do what? So when's your wife calling in? Uh, well, she was in there making her breakfast at 10.30 in the afternoon. She sleeps late now. She's getting old. <laughs> uh, so she'll call you. Yeah, okay. call him up. She'll give you a call. She won't talk long. Well, I'll throw something at her if she does. All right. That sounds good. We'll look she for She said the one time, one time she said that she was telling her son we'd gotten in a fight. And I said, fight? We never had a fight. I said, we had an argument, a disagreement. I never saw a saucer or a plate go flying by my head. So we were never in a fight. Cheers. Good on you, man. We just, people just need to get along with one another and quit picking through stuff because some book told them it was wrong thousands of years ago. Thanks. Well, I see that we do have uh, somebody who might have something to say about that uh, next up on the line. But... Um, I'm, I'm glad you're feeling, I'm glad you're feeling better, Phil, and I'm glad that. Oh you're yeah, I'm getting along good. Uh, pumping out cartoons best I can. That's <laughs> amazing. We appreciate it so much. Thank you from I mean from us to oh, you. Oh no, no most problem, love, brother. I enjoy it. I thank you. All right, you take care, my man. All right, you too. Bye. Bye bye. I like him. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's just he's just really sweet. So we feel like we got a good kind of group hug, feeling a little, a little better. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, Hakeem in Alabama, you are on live with Hello. Eric and EJ. How are you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I, uh, I went back and listened to our conversation a few times since last weekend. Uh, EJ, uh, what, what did, you, did you happen to... Yes, you I that? definitely did listened to it, too. It. Well, do you have any oh, corrections you, to make before we jump into things and kind of... Well, let's, let's, uh, let's recap for people who haven't seen last week's episode. In last week's episode, you called up and you were, um, I believe, talking about chaos. And if... Oh, wait a minute. Before you, before, I don't mean to cut you off. No, no, before go ahead. You, What's uh, up? Before you continue, just real quick, I want to um, uh, thank you for the platform that you provide for people to be able to call in and give ideas and thoughts on things. And um, I think it's um, very much so needed and very healthy. So I appreciate you and your crew for the work that you do. Appreciate it. You hear that, crew? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Hey, um, Akeem, that was really nice. Um, we appreciate it, and we do want to have the conversations. I know that it sounded heated, but when I hung up the phone last time, I was feeling just fine. Were you feeling all right? Yeah, yeah. I'm then then I want to. I'm looking forward to calling you again. Good. I, no. I for, for a lot of people, you know, especially when they were talking, they were saying, "Oh, they were just tearing each other apart." No, you can respect the person. I think you should respect right. the human that you're talking to. But that doesn't mean that bad ideas are okay, and it doesn't mean that you should respect bad ideas. You should be able to approach them and talk about them because if you are intellectually honest about it, if you care about what the truth is, then you should be open to it. And I try to give myself as an example of somebody who thought that he knew what was going on. I believe fully that uh, Jesus Christ had saved me and right. I found out that I was wrong. And it takes that sometimes, and especially for people with a hard head like me who uh, needed to learn it firsthand. But it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to grow and learn, especially when you want to know the truth. So with that said, I just wanted to get that out there because I, want to do have a, I do want to have a conversation, but I do want this conversation to be a little more um, structured. Last time uh, we kind of got off and went on a couple tangents. So let's, let's see okay. if we can kind of focus down, okay? Okay, sure. All right. Uh, so, do you want to sum up uh, the, the last talk, or do you have something different that you want to talk about today? Uh, I would love to start off on the last talk, but okay. I do want to um, uh, comment on the discussion that was, I think, the call-up before last. Mm -hmm. And I don't know um, the other, the other uh, host's name. I'm EJ. Um, EJ, mm -hmm. you said? Yeah. Yep, Hakeem, okay. EJ, EJ, <laughs> Hakeem. Nice to meet you, EJ. <laughs> um, she had she had stated hey. that um, 
that you'll determine whether you're a boy or girl by the doctor, by a doctor looking at your genitals and seeing if it looks more like a, a penis or more like a vagina. And Ben stated that she's not medically, they. you know, um, uh, very uh, a, a professional in the medical field. So uh, my suggestion is don't make that kind of statement if you're not. because I'm not a professional not in the medical thing. field, but I've done plenty of research on this because it is my identity. Uh, so I know a right. fair amount about it. So yeah, I okay, mean, but that's not the case. It, it depends. It, it's, we have 46 chromosomes and 22 of them. Uh, the pairs are, are called autosomes, and that's in the male and female. But the 23rd pair... Yes, the XX and XY. I, I've heard that this argument before, and quite frankly, it's boring. The sex chromosome. That's what differs in the male and female. All the other 22 are the same in male and female. Okay. But it's not just it's not just X and Y, and I I really don't want to get into this. Yeah, Hakeem, let's go to the different. Let's that's go to the science. next subject. I'm just saying, but that's that's the correct science. But it's no, not correct, not actually. And Hakeem, you you were doing this last week. Um, I am honestly sitting here. I am not a cosmologist, right? I don't have okay. a degree in philosophy, but here I am right. doing my best to make this right. You know, and to make sense of this. Um, I'm going to call bullshit on the assertions if you say that is the science. Yeah, what, science. what is because your background have, in biology? We, well, hold on, stop. We do have the the person who is going to school to become a, an engineer and, and what kind of engineer exactly? Aerospace. Aerospace engineer. So we were talking about the stars. Right, right, right. So if we're going to talk about to somebody who does have more information, that's the conversation I'd rather have. So let's just... Not to mention that the info that you're talking about, the, bio the biological nature of, of chromosomes and sex chromosomes and whatever, that is available. Right. Like, you can find that information and just asserting right. that, oh, it's one way or the other. The last time you would have heard that would be ninth grade biology. So maybe go read a research paper and then come back and talk about XY, XX and XY. And do it when EJ is on because I have no freaking clue what's going on. <laughs> Okay. okay. That's, so that's the, that's the medical science of it. That's that is the medical that's science. Medical. That you're but are you being a medical professional to too? Because you can't try to discredit me because I admitted that I'm not a medical professional when you aren't either. Yeah. So can we can we please get to the next argument? I would not argument? think that our doctors have it wrong. Holy crap! Come on. I mean, we trust our doctors, right? No, we're talking about something else. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Yeah. This okay. is boring. Yeah. This is overdone. Yeah. This information is over. freely available. Yes. Yeah. Sure. I, that, that's not my topic, but. Cool. Okay. Uh, the um, we was talking about you. You mentioned something about chaos. Mm -hmm. I think Eric. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you said if you wanted to talk about the last, we didn't get a. Uh, I think you said a structural something yes. established about the discussion. Yeah. Yes. So if you can elaborate on Absolutely. what you want me to. So um, from what I remember, and please let me know if I'm wrong, but I remember us talking specifically about intelligent design. And you yeah. had made a couple of assertions. And um, among those assertions, you said, if it was chaos, then you can look up into the sky and there would be explosions going on all of the time. Was, and, uh, was that accurately? Oh, let, me, you, let me elaborate on that, what I meant okay. by that. Because, okay. Because, I mean, the I was, these cosmos is not like a firework. You all, I know you all are, are pretty, pretty, you know, pretty intelligent on things. So I didn't feel I needed to go, per se, on detail on that aspect. But, yes, we have a lot of cosmic energies, all that that goes on, exploding stars. Yes, it exists, and it goes on on a daily basis. But we don't see the effects because of the distance of these effects. You understand? So the, by the universe expanding, it's moved. all of these things are moving further away from our solar system, not closing in on us, which will make them not only more, less, I mean, more, yes, make them uh, less dangerous to, them, to us, but also less visible and studyable for us. That's the best the, the okay, cosmologists of the day state. That's not how any of that works. <laughs> yeah. AJ, uh, would you correct? Because this is not, again, not so, my, I feel like I okay. just need to kind of hang out and... Uh, Something happen. Okay, so, so first of all, the expansion of the universe. I, I don't think we really should get into that because none of us here is an expert in astrophysics. Um, I think we have somebody in the audience who knows a little more about that, but... We do, we do have an astrophysicist, that's right. Yeah, none of, <laughs> none of us here in this conversation are experts in astrophysics. Now, I know a fair amount about stars and how they work, um, so I could probably talk a little bit more about that, but I don't want to talk about like the expansion of the universe or anything like that, just because we're not experts. And, and 
the right. conversation that we would have would be based in kind of our assumptions of how that works and not in how the actual physics of it functions. Right. But see, this is the thing. See, we don't have to be experts to get this information as human beings. We do not have to be experts. The science is available for every human being on this planet to get this information, just like you can get the oh, information. It's, it's available, I but you need to be able to, you need to have a baseline of knowledge to I be mean, able to understand it. We don't have it. to be an expert to, to identify that the Earth spins. Do we not? Do we or do we not? Let me okay. just answer that okay. question. Okay, let's, let's, let's get through, let's get past the, uh, the silly stuff. Let's and that was through. clear whether or not we need to be experts, I'm saying, because she made that claim. Uh, they. That we need uh, to be experts to identify things that exist around us. I don't want to, we do not. Okay, so what What do you want to talk about specifically? The work has been done by many, many scientists, so I don't understand. No, I, we... I, I'm just going to call bullshit if you claim that what you're saying yeah, if is you make, If you stuff. make assertions without having all of the knowledge about what we're talking about, okay, those assertions are necessarily that I, going I to not that, be that didn't reliable. Carry any weight to it. What assertion did I make that didn't carry any weight to it? Well, you started did talking about the expansion of the universe, and the way that you talked about it okay, made it pretty clear. That? Can you stop talking over me, please? Yes, yeah, sure. So you, you mentioned the expansion of the universe, and the way that you described it isn't actually how that works, really. Um, you said that oh, it should be harder to observe, and that's not actually the way that it works. It has to do with the actual space-time expanding, and that's why I don't want to get into it, because we're talking about really high-level physics that, you know, I know some about it, and I could talk to you a little bit about it, but I am not going to claim to be an expert, and it would be disingenuous of me to do otherwise. There is power in saying I don't have all the information right now. Now, if I could have access to research papers and I could pull them up and we could we could go through this line by line and we could talk about how this functions, I would be happy to do that. I don't have those right now. But if I had that information, we could have that conversation. I just don't want to have one right now where we're making assertions and assuming how things work when we don't actually know for sure that that's how it functions. Okay, so but we're... I, we're I, use, I use the assertion actually of distance, which is time and, and distance one and the same. is the distance that they are, which is the same as time, distance, you know. <laughs> no, uh, Hakeem, that's actually... I'm sorry, that's wrong. not... <laughs> so, um, so when I... I no, don't get me wrong. Time, yes. energy, matter, right? Uh, those are all fundamentally related to each other um, through special relativity. Right. We, we do know that. Um, but time and distance are separate things. Um, I, I don't know how you got to that. Um, but I, does this relate to whether or not a god exists? Because I feel like we are halfway through the show. Yeah, and we haven't had very much atheism talk. That's kind of why I'm that's here. What you, that's what you titled it, but I never dis called for discussion whether or not god exists. I was calling in reference of the design of the universe. So you don't, you, you're not talking exists. about whether a God exists or not? That's, that's what it was, and I had gave Hakeem. you a number Hold on. all throughout Hold on. the universe. Hakeem, you're not talking yeah. about whether or not a God exists. No, I brought And up, you called an atheist trial. you up how the universe you, came to exist, but that was my very first question. Yes, talk to a physicist. Um, if you don't, you're not talking about... Y'all asked what that. Y'all said y'all didn't know, and then that's how we got into chaotic... You know, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, talk to a professional um, and uh, give us a call if thing, I never Hakeem, got a chance to answer that question of the unseen. Because I really don't care. This is an atheist show. I'm not going to sit here and give you a soapbox for us to talk. If we're not even talking about the same thing. Yeah, why does so, your not? Yeah, no, why so, does your lack of knowledge about how the universe functions have anything to do with God? Yeah, so, um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to move on. Uh, take care, Akeem. If you think of something uh, about atheism that you want to talk about, cool. Yeah, let's uh, talk but if you want to argue with somebody, find a professional and don't bother us. Um, so let's move on to... Hey, Mr. Atheist. You're live with Eric and EJ. How are you doing? So good. How are the both of you? Well, I mentioned I, that I have finals coming up, so, you know, that's how my life is going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can I can I feel know. the aggression radiating <laughs> off of EJ right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm extra tense because I'm just like I got all the final stress, and so I'm just like I'm gonna bite somebody's head off. No, I'm trying to be nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, I do I real quick before I jump into mine, I want to bring up the very end of your first call. Uh, the guy ended with I know it's difficult for you, and I wanted to point out what I see as. A large amount of irony since the way that conversation started was 
how hard it is for him to remember and use pronouns. So I don't know. Am I the only one here who thinks that's just a bit nuts? It was, yeah, it was fun. Lots of hypocrisy in, this, in these calls so far, apart from Colonel Phil. He's been great. Yeah. Yeah, Colonel Phil's the man. So what do you want to talk about? Okay, so there is this individual who I am very sad to see has seduced much of the atheist community. So I wanted to talk to you about him and also one of his recent ideas. So recently, Matt Dillahunty debated Jordan Peterson. Oh! I knew the second he said Canadian, somebody seduced him. Canadian the Kermit the Frog? <laughs> oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. If you, by, I, did, by the way... Did you, did you watch the debate? I did. It's the, uh, it's the substrate that, uh, that is behind everything, and, and you really need to, to understand our social, cultural... I, 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 I mean, really, am I the only one who saw it? I did. Uh, oh, my gosh, watch it again. It's I don't Kermit. have time, dude! Well, you got after next week. Yeah, Okay. after my finals, you're going to watch it. Last night, last night, I was in a Skype call with uh, Brilliant Doubt, and I decided to try doing my impression of him. I'm not going to do it now. But I will tell you, it's only going to take me a week or two to get it down, and then you're not going to be able to stop hearing me do Jordan Peterson impression. <laughs> <laughs> so in the debate, uh -huh. Jordan Peterson once again makes the no true atheist. And I want to make sure that this is, I feel like this stuff, the atheists who have been seduced by him haven't heard his arguments on actual theism and atheism. And, and if they would watch those things, you would realize the same bullcrap vocabulary that is completely self-defined for him is what he uses to argue things. And, th and that's that vocabulary, that the, the way he dialogues is what seduces people. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, it's bullcrap when it's something relevant to you. So he made the no true atheist argument. Mm -hmm. And he basically said that uh, the only way to have morals is either to uh, believe in God or act like you believe in God, whether or not you say you do or not. So I want to I want to first talk about that, and then talk about in general uh, your well. I think you've already given your opinions on Jordan Peterson, but yeah, the atheists who like Jordan Peterson are just transphobes who like him because he agrees with them. Uh, they, well, <laughs> the, the, there are plenty of people like that, and there are plenty of people who just think that he's intellectual because he sounds you know he uses a lot of big words. But when it and anybody down, who knows the actual theories he's using knows that he's full of bullshit. But yeah, it just, that's just me. Yeah, it just it takes some time to kind of parse apart if you're not used to it. But um, I'd be happy to parse one or two of them apart before we move on. Uh, so what exactly, which one did you want to talk about? The, uh, the, no, true, the no true atheist okay. argument, which, yeah, I, I, I haven't done an episode yet on. I'm, I'm looking too soon. Uh, but uh, it, it is something that it feels like it's getting more popular right now. It used to be, why do you hate God? Now it's, well, you're not really an atheist. It seems to be emerging more and more. Uh, so what, what a are, silly what are deflection. I that? mean... Yeah, my response is usually, yeah. well, then you're not really a Christian because obviously Islam is correct, or you're not really yeah. a Hindu because Christianity is right. Like, it and, doesn't mean anything. And, and over here uh, at the ACA, when somebody calls in and says that they're a Christian or a Hindu or Muslim or whatever, we just say, okay. I mean, it, I, I'm not going to dictate to you what you think that you know, your religion is, I'm going to take your word for it, and I'm going to meet you where you're at instead of building up these straw men, which is what uh, I saw during the debate. It was creating this, this is atheism, this is what atheists think, therefore you're not it. And I, I, I cannot imagine a productive conversation when all you're doing is trying to invalidate other people instead of listening to what they have to say and, being cha and, and challenging that and talking about actual issues right. instead of saying, oh, you're not really this or that. It's... I, I, I mean, how nice would it be if every Christian that called in were just like, no, nah, you're not really Christian. Yeah, like, and I mean, you know, it really comes back to what we talked about towards the beginning is like you can't know somebody's own personal experience of the way that they view the world and the way that they feel about the things that they feel. And so you cannot know if that person legitimately believes in the thing that they say that they believe in. All we can do is either say, yes, I believe that you believe that, or say, no, I don't believe that you believe that, but at what point are you actually having a productive con conversation if you do that? You know, if somebody tells you they believe something, you generally kind of have to take it at face value unless it becomes clear that they're just faking it, which yeah. most of the time people aren't. Right. Like, people rarely are lying about their beliefs. And for the purposes I, of this show, even if they're lying about it, if they're presenting a good discussion and things can be learned from it, I still don't care. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I think it's important to expose the, especially with this, 
this scenario where you have a bunch of people who love this guy because he seems so intellectual and it's all based on stats. And then you go, well, look at how he approaches this. He pretends he has stats. He pretends he has information. Uh, he, he, he quoted crime and punishment uh, during this argument. But in reality, he's going with, I often refer to him as a common sense fraud. He takes those things that feel like common sense, adds a big vocabulary to them to seduce people to it. And I think it's important to expose and still talk about those things because at some point, at some point if, as you go down their rabbit hole, it, it inevitably will show whether or not their opinion is actually based on facts or when and how intensely feelings came in. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I specifically wanted to bring up this guy that I hope any of your viewers who are seduced by him will take a second look. I don't know, I'm seeing, I'm seeing people in the chat being like, oh, EJ was insulting a whole fan base, but wants people to respect their identity. So like, people, people <laughs> will feel the way that they wanna feel. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, what's interesting to me about the no true atheist argument is a lot of times it's used as like, oh, well, you grew up a Christian, but now you're an atheist. So like, clearly you just still believe in God and just want to sin. Um, but that doesn't right. take into account that there are people that were never Christian to begin with or never religious to begin with. I grew up secular. You know, I never believed in God. I have never believed in God. I never even considered it to be a possibility. Um, and so like, I, the likelihood of me believing in God is just as likely as me believing in Thor's existence or believing in, I don't know, the pagan gods or believing in, you know, right. Hindu gods. Like, I, it is equally as likely, which is to say zero. And so the, the argument that is often used is, oh, well, you used to be religious, so clearly you just abandoned your religion so that you could sin or so that you could, you know, do whatever. They use a bunch of different justifications, and it just doesn't hold up because there are people that were never religious yeah. to begin with. Yeah. And I, I have two thoughts on that specific thing. The first one is uh, it, just to give you an example, when you do come up religious, I came up Mormon and I still to this day hear the argument from family, from people who intimately know me, know how much I've changed, that deep down I still know it's true uh, and that I'm rejecting it. And so my second point to that thing is, and Mormons will not believe this because it, 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 it is um, defiant of what they think is the nature of Mormonism. I didn't become a good person until I left Mormonism. And in fact, Mormonism was what was preventing me from becoming a good person. And that is so often the case with people of many religions. It's not just Mormonism. Mormonism, as Christopher Hitchens used to say, though I think he was quoting somebody else, without religion, you have good people doing good things, bad people doing bad things. With religion, you have good people doing bad things. Something and like that. that is... Yeah. yeah, it's not, that wasn't a perfect quotation, no, but, but I, yeah. that is, that, that is so much the experience of myself, Eric, I think we've talked about this before, that it's yours, and so this new, no true atheist, just fuck off. You know? It's boring, too, like, it's well, not, it's not original, it doesn't add anything to the conversation, it's just like, well, clearly you aren't, therefore I'm right, like, but, it's, it doesn't do anything. Right, but it is a, it's all to me, supposition. well, mm -hmm. but to me, I think um, in a lot of discussions, it's a really good jumping off point to be able to have conversations about deeper issues. Um, I'm happy to oh, yeah. take the time if somebody really does think that, and then use that as a springboard to be able to talk about other things, you know, because you don't just apply this epistemology when it comes to religion. You apply your yep. same toolbox for deciphering the world around you everywhere. And so if this is something that you're using to reliably get to truth or thinking that you can reliably get to truth by claiming this kind of thing, it's maybe it's a good, maybe it's a, a good thing that uh, they brought it up because we can fix that. So. Right. And, and you can, you can take that to uh, further conclusions with them and discuss those mechanisms they have where they are deciding which parts in the Bible are good and which are not and showing them that they have an exterior mechanism that has, anyway, that I could go on for days about that. Yeah. You guys have a, a rest of a show to do. We do, but we appreciate your call. And um, we're, gonna be, you. we're gonna be having uh, some announcements. Um, if you do want to follow uh, Talk Heathen, uh, let me get a little bit of information up. Uh, you can call live during our show at 1-512-686-0279. You can email us, mail at talkheathen.com. You can also get a hold of me at Dirty Heathen. You can get a hold of me on, uh, that's Twitter, uh, Instagram, Eric the Heathen. 
Uh, you can also find me on Facebook or our Facebook for Talk Ethan, which is Facebook of Talk Ethan. Uh, Jamie, who's not here, is uh, at Jamie the Heathen uh, for Instagram and reason at reason underscore evidence for Twitter. And if you want to get a hold of EJ, at abominable EJ on Twitter. <laughs> thanks. Ooh, ooh, and Talk Ethan on Reddit. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely follow us because we're going to be Done having some really, really cool stuff. <laughs> uh, actually, um, I'm queuing up to do some self promotion and some promotion of others in the next week. So stay tuned, and we're going to be showing you some really cool stuff. We're excited. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. Ooh, ooh. Take care, buddy. Yep, yep. No true atheist. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you know how many atheists that I've come across that are just like, yeah, you know. I totally get the God thing, but your aura is just oh so, like, man, I can tell you're an old soul. It's like, how did you get through this and not, <laughs> like, ditch this along the way? Why do you still think that there's spiritual... Yeah. I mean, I get it. Everybody wants to have superpowers. Just really, people just really like right? to hold on to the supernatural because it's part of... I mean, there, there's a reason that we created it as, as a human species is... Because we like to have ways to understand the unknown and the things that we can't quite comprehend yet. And who doesn't want to have special powers? Yeah, and so having kind of this wooey, you know, spiritualist, even once you get rid of the whole God thing, mm -hmm. it's it's like a comfort blanket almost. It is. Of like, oh, well, I don't have religion anymore, but at least I still have my spirituality. And yeah. I mean, I'm not going to fault people for that as long as it's not harmful. But well, also, I, like, you're, you'd be better off living in the real world. Like, join us. It's I, great out here. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually do fault them, and I do think it's harmful, and I do uh, fight I'm, against it. Um, I meant more, I, I don't fault them as it's it's a coping mechanism. In I, I see it as maybe like a stepping stone in their journey to, to you know, find, finding the yeah. way out of all of that. But I, maybe I'm being optimistic here. Well, I mean, really, I think that um, it is another epistemological peace, that we're not just atheists, right? There are tons of atheists out there that do believe in wooey spiritual stuff. Mm -hmm. The reason you don't have any people on this show that are like that is because we are also skeptics. Um, if you want to see other motivations for us, we are also secular humanists. Yeah. And those are other labels that we apply to ourselves that are not just atheism. And so I do want to kind of put a pin in that, that that's what you're getting with this show. You're getting atheist, skeptic, secular humanist. If you want something else that's okay, you know, I hope you find it. But if you do like what's going on here, hey, hit like and subscribe while you can. <laughs> and hit that button and let's get, a, let's and, get and up. And to We're, be clear, if you're, if you're into woo and spiritualism and you also believe in homeopathy and alternative med medicine, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please fuck that person. Um, I, really, honestly, I cannot stand the, the people who think that they're creating medicine and selling it to desperate people Alter and taking alternative advantage. Alternative medicine that works is just called medicine. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay. So I, well, I do want to get to someone else. Um, I would like to go get well, bleh. Dwayne in Philadelphia. You are live with Eric and EJ. How's it going? Hello, folks. Good hey, to hey. See you. Good to talk to you. What you want to talk to? Uh, what did you want to talk to us about today? Well, uh, first off, I am an atheist. I'm also a Taoist uh, in the philosophical sense, not the Chinese religion. Uh, my I have been involved in science and a, a, a variety of things. I'm overeducated, to say the least. My problem with a lot of cosmology and uh, particle physics is that they make claims that are more along the lines of dogma and they bend over backwards with apologetics to defend those dogmas. My, my prime example is nothing, they say something cannot come from nothing, although they can't demonstrate it. My stance as being an honest scientist is that it is possible. We can't say it's not impossible until... Uh, right out of hand. We can say, as far as we know, it seems that something cannot come from nothing, but that does not mean it can't, especially uh, if we 
uh, take, say, Krauss's argument that everything goes back to a quantum vacuum, that in a quantum vacuum, a perfect one, all laws of physics break down because there are no particles, no energy to interact. Therefore, nothing applies. And in that aspect, it is possible that something can come from nothing. In fact, we have slight evidence of that with quantum vacuums, quantum mm -hmm. fluctuations, that particles do come into existence uh, and out of existence constantly. Uh, but those are under constrained conditions. They aren't perfect vacuums. That isn't a quantum vacuum because we can't create a quantum vacuum. Mm -hmm. uh, but to me, a lot of the science... I can understand why theists claim that science is a religion because it, to me, a lot of it does have that uh, same characteristics of a religion. And I, 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 I stand up against that. Yeah. And Especially that's kind of all I wanted to say, that I'm an atheist, but uh, I'm not a oh, science is always right, and what they say goes, and yeah. they know everything because they don't know. We, yeah, I mean, if a scientist, a scientist is... says, I know, mm -hmm. that's when I'm like, okay, All right. let me get ready for some bullshit. Yeah, yeah. a scientist asserting something mind. point blank without any kind of backing up and just saying it is this way, that's bad science. Um, that doesn't make science a religion. That makes that person a bad scientist. And, and can I tell you really quick that... You used the word quantum so many times that my internal alarm system is just going off, and I'm just like, oh, no, the quantum, quantum, quantum. But you're not actually doing the Deepak Chopra. You're actually giving us real, you know, you're talking about it in a realistic way that really deals with what it is, and I think that's, <laughs> that's cool, but just I'm just kind of getting that. And also the religious thing, you know, I came from religion, and that religion involved shame, it involved guilt, it involved groupthink, it involved abuse, emotional and physical abuse. It involved... Um, telling people that if they don't do this, they're going to burn forever, forever, right? You needed to go through rituals regularly. Uh, those rituals involved raising other people up. It involved all of this stuff that I just don't see in atheism at all. Yeah, I mean, so, religion has more to it than just believing unfounded things. Like, that's absolutely a part of it. And anybody who is believing things without any kind of backing up reason for doing so... I mean, that's not necessarily automatically a religious thing to do, but it's it's a dishonest thing to do, and it's disingenuous, and we shouldn't do it. And if you have a scientist who is doing that without any kind of backup, any kind of data, that person is a shitty scientist. Uh, but that doesn't make science a religion, because there's there's so much more to it than that. And I, I worry about giving oh, religious I agree, votes ammo. But my point is that I can understand how religious people can see a lot of that as... Con to use that to call science religion, even though I know science is not a religion. That's uh, fair. I, I think I see where you're coming from. I mean, I, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. I, I feel like a lot of it, though, comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of how science functions as not an organization, because it's not really an organization. There are scientific organizations, but science as a whole is not one. But I think a lot of it comes from them seeing science as being this kind of esoteric thing that is inaccessible to them. Um, and that's, that's kind of where it comes down to they, they view it as a religion because religion also intentionally obfuscates how it functions at a higher level. And it, it makes it intentionally so that you have to accept paradoxes and things that you don't understand. And so to them, if they aren't scientifically literate, it is also kind of similarly obfuscated and esoteric. And I think that that's where the, the connection comes in, is they, it functions similarly if you, don't, if you don't know how it works. And the difference is, religion, you cannot, because it is intentionally designed for you to not fully understand what's going on. Like, you're supposed to accept that you won't understand God and that you won't understand, um, you know, God works in mysterious ways and all that. But science, you can. If you put in the work, if you have access to the resources, you can understand it. That's the difference to me. Yeah. And as to the earlier part of this, uh, this show, uh, one of my degrees is in biological anthropology. And EJ, you're spot on. You're not a, you know, you. you're not, 
vindication. Don't know everything, <laughs> but all the points that you were making are spot on from a uh, scientific point of view. I wanted to add that in. Thank you and so much. And that's about all I got to say. Okay, thank and you. Thank for you for calling. letting me uh, on your show. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a fan, and I'm I'm super stoked that you called. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care. So, um, I feel validated right, right? now. Right. <laughs> um, and and there's more to it. I actually saw someone in the comments that was saying that they're a Christian and they adhere to science. Don't adhere to science. Don't do that. That is a bad thing. Yeah, hero worship of scientists is not good. No, like, and <laughs> and really, I mean, this is where I kind of want to talk about skepticism, right? You have a, a really awesome history of skepticism that you can trace back to Socrates, right? Socrates, what he did is he tried to break down, right? He tried to break everything that you know down to try and get to the underpinnings of it. For us to be able to say of anything, truly, I don't completely no, and that frees you up to be able to learn more, and you yeah. you you see that move on further and further. Um, you have uh, Descartes, who famously tried to cut out everything, and unfortunately, he tried to come back by, you know, Building giving himself up, special ahead. permissions yeah. and, and, and going into the circle, but it all goes back to saying, I don't know, and that's okay. That's why I do say is the most intellectually honest thing to do is say I don't know, because then you can find out, but it, and that's okay. It can be uncomfortable for people to say, "I don't know." It can be. It can be. It's 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 definitely a, an uncomfortable place to be in because we like to know things. We don't like to feel like we don't understand what's going on around us, mm -hmm. and it, it can be really hard to break out of that. Of, I have to admit that I don't know how this thing works, and that's that's a really good place to be in because if you don't know, that is the first step to knowing. Exactly. Whereas if you already think that you know how something works, you're never going to find out if that's actually how it works because you assume you already know, so you're not gonna seek the answers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I do want to, oh, Colonel Phil's wife called. Okay, I gotta say hi to, hi Colonel <laughs> Phil's wife. Hey. Hey. How so, are y'all doing today? Good, good, how are you? I'm doing good. Do you so, have a name besides Colonel uh, Phil's wife? Yes, my name is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. With a C. <laughs> <laughs> but he calls me Booger, and most of the people on Facebook and any place else that contacts him knows me as Booger. <laughs> so we heard that uh, you kind of came around to the skeptic side of things. Uh, how do you like it? The water's uh, pretty nice. Kind of. Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm like anybody that has been a Christian all their life, uh, but I became disillusioned with Christianity quite a while back. I mm -hmm. still believed in God, um, but, you know, Christians didn't act like Christians. Well, if you understand what I'm saying. I, I remember as a Christian saying that, and then later on I started going, you know, okay, if you want to call yourself a Christian, I'm not going to try and define Christianity for you. But when I was a Christian, I did have a mental image of what I thought a Christian was, and that was somebody who was honest, ethical, kind, caring, compassionate, and all of those things I had wrapped up in what I thought a Christian was, and I learned that that's actually just being a good person, and we could do that too. So is that what you mean, kind yeah. of the, the being a Christian as a good person versus just being a good person? Well, I stopped calling myself a Christian a long time ago and simply called myself a believer. Mm -hmm. uh, but as Philip mentioned to you, I had an experience uh, right about the time that we met, which was 18 years ago, and I was an alcoholic for over 25 years, mm -hmm. and I quit drinking and got sober, and my last husband is how I met Philip. Uh, he committed suicide, mm -hmm. and so I was at home with that grief. I had been sober for two weeks and did not want to go back to drinking because his suicide was because of drugs and alcohol. And I was in the bathroom um, asking God to please give me the strength to not go get a drink. And it was as if I 
actually physically felt someone put their hand on the top of my head and just a warmth mm-hmm. no, I, I, I've, from my I, head all the way down my body. I've, I've had that. I've had that. Um, I and guess, oh, go ahead and finish. That was why it was so hard for me to give up. <laughs> Uh, that's totally understood. I know that um, I personally, in times of incredibly great stress and emotional, you know, um, just being completely overloaded, that I've seen and heard things. And I know that when I've been wrapped up and totally in, you know, church service and also outside of church, like um, at, a, at an amazing concert, I remember having that and uh, doing drugs. <laughs> I'm feeling that, but you there know, you go. well, I mean, when you look at it, it does feel like that, and it does reaffirm to you what you're hoping is true. You know, we had a guy call in a couple months ago who said, "I heard a knocking on the roof," and that's how I knew that God was real. And I wasn't trying to tell him the knocking didn't happen. I was just trying to explain to him that there are other things that could have happened, and that's okay because. If you'd say you don't know, then maybe you'd be open to finding out more, you know? So yeah, well, since maybe he could have got his roof fixed. Y'all shows, hmm? Since I've been watching your shows, mm-hmm. uh, I understand so much more. I'm I, so I, glad. I really do. Um, <laughs> I don't call myself an atheist. I'm just a person who loves everybody. And I try to express that in my everyday life. You know, um, I know that the atheist word can be... It's got some baggage. It does. Um, but I will tell you, me personally, I'm in a safe place in my life. I'm in a, a place where I can be an out and open atheist for other people to be able to interact with. And mm-hmm. I got to tell you, I've gotten a lot of people in my personal life, even before I did this show, who said, hey, you were the first atheist that I've ever met, or, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. Um, So there is a good argument for embracing the term, but honestly, just be awesome. I mean, really, if you're going to be awesome, I'm really not going to complain, you know, just thank you. And thank you for saying you're watching the show and that it helped. I really appreciate that. That means so much to me. Thank you. Well, you, you guys, you guys are are really terrific, and you know I get into the animation that Philip's been uh, doing for you guys. He yeah. shows me every step of the way what he's doing. <laughs> Maybe you're his muse. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I hope so. Uh, <laughs> we have multiple marriages behind us, and. This is the longest either one of us have been married. We'll be married 18 years in July. Congratulations. And we are together 24-7, and we never fight. Dang. I mean, it's the most wonderful thing I've ever had in my life. You are setting up some (laughs) unrealistic standards for the rest of us. You know that, right? (laughs) That's relationship goals right there. Yeah. Um, No. Kathy. uh, Thank you for calling in. We really appreciate it. Well, I, I appreciate everything that y'all are doing for other atheists. I'm just not quite sure why people with cosmology questions and and all that cause an atheist show. But uh. <laughs> well, you know, I think it has to uh, d- to do with skepticism, and there are a lot of cosmological arguments that people try and get to try and prove that there's a god. And so, uh, okay. and so they give that argument. They say, well, something had to create everything. Therefore, I call that something God. And so you kind of got to break it down and go, well, what's wrong with that argument? Well, there's no saying that something actually was there or that something created a thing. A creation implies that there's thought and care and, and, and none of those things are, are proven. And so when you have people that are calling in about that, a lot of that is tangentially related, especially to things that we talk about. Not to mention that those kinds of conversations are really interesting to have. Like, talking about the nature of the universe is really fascinating, even if you don't have all of the tools in the toolbox to maybe discuss it as accurately as 
as, as it should be. But it's still really fascinating to have, and it's something that maybe people don't get to talk about very often. And since it's kind of related to, to atheism in that there's a lot of cosmological arguments, like Eric said, uh, people use it as an opportunity to like, oh, there's this platform that I can use to talk about this, to have this conversation that I've been wanting to have and nobody in my life wants to talk about it because they think I'm boring. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's an opportunity for, for those kinds of conversations, and I think people like to take advantage of that. And not necessarily yeah. in a neg negative way, but just in a, oh, this is a thing that I can do, so maybe I'm going to do it kind of way. Yeah. What well, did you I say? don't think you should be called abominable. I took it I as really a compliment, don't. quite honestly. EJ? I mean, if oh, somebody okay. like Hamish thinks that I'm abominable, then that's that's the best compliment that he can give me. So I, I'm taking it. I'm running with it. <laughs> yeah, EJ, EJ is abominable. <laughs> well, well, we'll just have to we'll just have to come up with an abominable character for you. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. I look we, forward to it. Definitely, uh, Kathy. Thank you for calling in. You take care. Okay. All right, y'all have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. You know, um, I've given the, uh, the gumball argument mm -hmm. a couple of times on this show, and I haven't had the chance to introduce it, but today somebody actually brought us a jar of gumballs, and I absolutely love it, and I said, oh, well, now I'm, now I'm gonna need to count to find out whether it's odd or even, <laughs> you know? And they said, you can't, I glued it shut. Oh my God. And I was like, yes! <laughs> that's intense, and I love it. <laughs> right? That's I, commitment, though. That's, it's the point, it's Watch the point. Watch as it turns out there's like half of one buried in the middle, so it's neither odd nor even. Well, you know, it's funny, is you can, you can assert that it's even, and I can assert that it's odd, and then we can go to war with each other. It's Schrodinger's gumballs. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I would like to get to the next person. It looks like we have uh, Andrew in Spain. Andrew, you're live with Eric and EJ. Thank you so much for waiting. Hello, Andrew? Hi, can, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you guys are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I'm, so, I'm so glad for being here. I tried calling to uh, like two weeks ago, but uh, I think I called. Well, no, I called early, but then uh, something went wrong with my wife. Uh, wife, sorry, and uh, things happened. That's okay. Well, what did you want to talk about today? Anyway, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about skepticism and okay. um, when uh, when you ha well. Dealing with skepticism with uh, mental illness. I don't, I don't have a mental illness myself, but um, well, my dad uh, died last September. Mm -hmm. But for the last six months of his life, he uh, well, he was basically paranoid. I don't remember what the diagnosis was, but in common speech, he was paranoid and hearing voices. And uh, I, I don't know, at something like two or three in the morning or at odd times, he would call us. I mean, my, uh, I'll, uh, I'm 25. I live with with my my sister, but, uh, but my were divorced. So uh, uh, my, my dad would, was not living with us. So, um, but anyway, he, he'd call at odd times, like really worried because he was sure that something had happened to us. And oh, um, I, I go and try to reason with him. Why, why do you feel that? What reasons do you have? And in the end, it, after a, after something like two minutes, he realized that he had no reason to uh, uh, to call. He uh, and he I mean, he noticed, and then he uh, uh, he would just go. Uh, forgive me, mm -hmm. just. Nuts, and I don't. I don't think that uh, you'd call some someone with that problem not so. But that's more or less what he said. Uh, and I, I tried when 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 I met him. Uh, well, uh, I spoke with him. A couple, um, Andrew, times, uh, over we're, we're, that time. your your call uh, is starting to yeah. break up a lot. Um, oh. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, no. That's okay. Um, but I want to try and see if I can get your question uh, because it's okay. uh, I'm having trouble uh, hearing you, so yeah. I just want to uh, be able to answer. You know, I, yeah, yeah. So uh, 
well, I just wanted to um, get and get it out there that uh, he, uh, I mean, he was never really as uh, much of a skeptic. Um, I mean, uh, in terms of religion, he was a uh, he believed in something out there, but uh, he did apply skepticism in some areas of his life. Then, uh, so he not apply them in others. But I tried to get him to uh, understand skepticism and try to apply it. But he, at those times when he had those moments, he couldn't. So uh, I was wondering. Uh, do, 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 Oh, you're really breaking. Yeah, up. we can't hear you. You were wondering what, uh, or what? What are your opinions on that? Well, I so uh, Andrew, we're going to let you go because the the call quality is, but uh, we're going to talk on it, okay? So, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that was a bummer. I was I was yeah, really hoping to get to it, and really... then it, right at the end, it started breaking up real bad. Yeah, I think I think his question was how to deal with skepticism when you have kind of mental health issues that are preventing you from recognizing what is real and what isn't. Mm. I, I think that that is what he was um, trying to get at. But I, I may be misinterpreting it because, again, it was, it was breaking up a lot. But I think that that was what, uh, okay. what the question was. All right. Well, um, as an answer, well, you know, that's why we want to be able to replicate things. That's why we want to be able to test a thing over and over and have other people try the test and find out for sure whether or not something is that way, especially if it's really, really important. So I totally understand, and a lot of it is caring. You know, there are people who, you know, need our help, um, and there are other people who can manage along. I don't ever want to stigmatize mental health issues. Um, I have clinical depression. Uh, that's something that I've always had. And it's not something that I'm ashamed of. I regularly, you know, go to therapy and I'm medicated. And it, it's a lot about, you know, it, it's skepticism. That's really kind of what got me through. A lot of it is knowing that I'm not alone. It's being able to try things and test things and, and I don't know. I, I, I feel them. I don't know if there's a whole lot that we can talk on about it other than just talking about empathy and, and I mean, understanding and kind of being there for each other. I mean, one thing that I have to say about this is that humans aren't robots. I mean, we're not capable of being 100% rational all of the time. Uh, 24 7, seven days a week, you know, what well, I said 24 7. You know what I'm trying to say. We're not capable of being 100% rational all of the time. Uh, but what's important is when you have those moments of irrationality later being able to say, oh, you know, maybe I wasn't being totally, totally realistic, or um, maybe I, I was interpreting things incorrectly, or I was relying too heavily on, on the way that I felt in that moment. And that's, it's okay to have moments of irrationality as long as you're later able to, to rationalize them and think, okay, how, how was I feeling in that moment and why? Um, for example, so I, about a year and a half ago, was incredibly, incredibly stressed during um, a really difficult period of the semester um, with the amount of work that I had. And something that can happen when you're really, really stressed is that your anxiety levels go up way, way, way up. And your stress levels go way, way up. And I was pulling an all-nighter and was just, it, it was just miserable. And I had this, I, I'm not normally somebody that gets like afraid or paranoid or worried that there's somebody breaking into my apartment. But I heard a weird noise in the middle of the night. The apartment was entirely dark. My roommate wasn't there. And I just started panicking that somebody had broken into my apartment and was going to come hurt me. And that moment of irrationality, like I had, I had a full-on panic attack. I was freaking out. It was really bad. And I was texting um, my partner and just being like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, somebody's here. And they were helping me rationalize through it and work through it and say, okay, there's nobody there. Like, okay, go turn on a light, you know, take, take a deep breath. And you can have moments of irrationality and you can have moments of intense paranoia and fear and that doesn't mean that you can't be skeptical about parts of your life, because skepticism isn't just doubting everything all the time 
and and always seeking for the, the rational answer. It's just, it's a way of evaluating information. And sometimes we're just not able to do that. And that's okay. It just comes down to later on when you are in a space uh, that you can do that, that you do, and that you try to as much as you can. Um, I, I guess that's kind of where I'm going with that is, is it's, you don't have to be a skeptic all of the time, every day. We aren't robots, we aren't logic machines. We're humans, and we're allowed to feel emotions and feel fear and paranoia and all of those other things. That doesn't mean that you can't be a skeptic too. Damn, damn! <laughs> That's why I'm happy that you're here. Um, I would like to get to at least one more person. Uh, Kendall has been waiting online for pretty much the whole episode. Kendall, thank you so much for waiting. You're on live with Eric and EJ. Hi. Hey. How are you Kendall? Hi, EJ. Hey, we're okay, doing... So first of all, I want to say hmm. that since I have started talking to EJ personally, I now call everybody they, them, and it's really not that difficult. I'm changing the world! So the first... <laughs> yeah, no, like the first caller, it's, it's it's really not that difficult to kind of reroute your language. Um, and like you guys said, it, 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 your comfort is more important than how difficult it is to change your language. So I'm sorry that you had to deal with that person. Um, I hear it way more yeah. often than, than yeah. I would like. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I figure. I'm just happy that EJ is here to be able to have that conversation. And even though it's uncomfortable, EJ being able to say those things and get that information out there frees up a whole lot of other people from having to go through a lot of that discomfort. I'll set them straight. So. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's awesome that they're willing to actually discuss it. Um, Cause I know it's not easy for you, EJ, and you don't owe anybody an explanation, but you are helping to educate people. So thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm willing to put in the the emotional labor that it takes, and not every trans person is able to. Not everybody is in a space where they have the energy and the emotional capacity to be able to do that day in day out. And sometimes they just right. want to curl up and they don't want to talk to anyone. And I 100% understand that. But I I do have the capability, and so I I want to use that when I can. Right, and that's actually well. I actually spoke to both of you about this um, just one on one about what happened with my parents. But I won't go into too great of detail on this call. I did want to talk about, um, speaking of, like, having the privilege to speak out about, you know, in your case, your gender identity. Um, I feel that I'm in a really awesome, privileged place where I can be an out and open atheist. And I feel that it's kind of my responsibility that I've taken on to, I guess, show people what it is to be an atheist and show people you know, that they meet me, they find out I'm a nice person, they find out I'm a good mother, things like a hard worker, things like that. Um, but I'm also an atheist. So to sum it up, what happened was my folks called me because they had seen my social media accounts and stuff like that, um, where I blatantly list on there, like the first thing you see on my Facebook is that I'm an atheist. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm actually in the process of starting my own business right now. And what my, my dad had said to me was that I am limiting my customer base because atheists are such a small percentage of the population, which, first of all, I would kind of disagree with. I think there are a lot more people that are atheists than are comfortable coming out about it. Um, but I... I kind of, I wanted to know what your guys' take on that is as far as, I, I, to me, it's worth it um, to kind of use my platform to end stigmas, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I'm wondering too, do you think it's a better approach to not put on anything that I'm an atheist so that when people Google me, they don't know, then they do business with me and it's a great interaction. They have a great experience and then they find out I'm an atheist. I mean, ultimately, that, ultimately that's kind of your decision. I don't, I think that your parents' assertion right. that you'll lose customers is probably not accurate. For, for example, um, before mm -hmm. I came on the show the first time, I talked to Eric and I said, you know, I... He asked if I had any concerns, and I said, I'm non-binary, I use they, them pronouns, and I, I'm worried that maybe you'll lose some, some, some viewers because of that 
that and because it'll start that conversation. And uh, I mm -hmm. think you said to me verbatim, uh, I, you know, fuck them, I want you, or something, <laughs> something along those lines, which I, I, I very much appreciated. Sounds like but, Eric. <laughs> but I will say, I don't think that you lost very many viewers and you gained a whole lot more. So I, I not to toot my own horn, no, I'm kidding. Well, uh, I'm not gonna take, I, I, you know. but the point is, it, it's not a guarantee that like your, your parents' assertion is based in their perception of how society functions. And I think that it, it's, it's your choice. If you want to be open and you think that that's important for you and, and you're not concerned with how it may or may not hypothetically affect your business, then go for it. Because we need more atheists out there saying, I'm an atheist and I'm still a good person and I'm still a good mother, like you said, and you know I can run a business and I can do all of these things. There's nothing different about me other than I don't believe in God. Be and, that person. Yeah. Right. If and, that is and, what you want right. to do, then do it. And after seeing, and after the interactions that I have had with you, do it. You are an awesome person, and I would oh, absolutely you. support you. <laughs> so, good. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, thank I, you. you know, it, it's hard too because they basically told me that it was selfish because I am a single mom and I don't get any kind of assistance from anybody. I don't get child support. And they told me it's selfish because you're turning down money that you could use for your son. And oh, that that's really jealous. hurt me. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I don't know if there's a lot of validity behind that. And I know this is obviously just like your guys' opinions, but I think yeah. it's an important conversation to have because I'm sure there are other people that watch this show that are going through the same thing. Kendall? These conversations that we're having, they are uncomfortable for a lot of people. And for some people who yeah. would base business decisions on religion, that's a fact of the world that we're in. But these conversations, this, what we're doing, is helping make sure that the world that your son grows up in is a little better. And I think yeah. that that is the definition of being a good mom, of being a good parent of wanting to make the world better for your children. I, I mean, I absolutely see it, and I'm happy. I'm really, really happy that you're doing it, and I'm really glad you called in. Thank you. Thank you, me too. I won't take up any more of your guys' time, but uh, thanks for taking my call. Thank you. Take care. And if I may, also, yeah. um, like you were saying a couple of times during calls, um, you know, that this is this is everybody's family. It's so true and I just want to thank you guys for having this platform because when I was going through this whole thing with my family um you guys both of you actually I turned I was able to turn to and get some of this off my chest and you were both so supportive and kind and it's it's really nice um even you know the atheist experience discussion page everybody's been so wonderful and it's so nice to know that I have somewhere to go when other people are going to turn their backs on me so thank you Thank you. You take care. You too. All right. Bye. Bye, Kendall. Yeah. Bye. Oh, shit. Oh, you hung up. <laughs> um, so before we end things, I did also, um, I'm trying my best to get through our email back catalog, and I am working through it. Um, but I did get to meet someone, uh, Aaron. Um, I'm loving our conversations, and I know it's a rough time, but we're here for you, and you're not alone. Is this and, the person who got... Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, do you remember our sign-off? Uh, we don't hate Yes, yes, I do, so I do. So, so first we've got to get the, okay. the love rings. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yes, yeah. So, wait, oh, that's right. To the atheists out there, to everybody else in the community, you have a home here, and we're glad, we're happy to have the conversation. And to everybody who's questioning, keep questioning. But to those who believe, we, we don't, don't hate, hate you, you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. <laughs>